Awesome. Welcome everyone over to my Instagram page, What's Your Language? I'm Meg and today I am, I'm actually really excited. I'm really looking forward to sharing this beautiful woman with you. Um, it's usually the roles are reversed uh, and I'm usually on her show, The Lipstick Lunch on Mondays. Um, on Newcastle Live Radio, but she has an incredible let's go back a bit. She has an incredible story to share, and it is Brain Aneurysm Awareness Month, all of September. Um, and this beautiful woman, Louise Wilkinson, um, I believe is going to share an incredible story on gratitude. So I'm just giving it a few moments to invite Louise on. Um, as you guys come onto the feed here. Gonna turn this around a little bit. Sorry, I'm just struggling with that. Alright, beautiful. That's better. Gotta love these home setups sometimes. Alright, so I'm just waiting for Louise to jump on. Um, but those of you who are jumping on, I know it's just taking a little bit of time here. I'm just seeing that it's coming on. Um, feel free to ask any questions through this live video um, on anything that you would like to know. Um, if maybe you've had someone in your family go through a brain aneurysm or you're not sure on that, um, everything is open and on the table. Um, so, yeah, so feel free to shout out any questions with that. I'm just going this. All right, guys. So I'm just going to invite Louise on, and let's um, let's do this. Sounds like she's already there. Awesome. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> uh, even better seeing you. It's weird not talking to you on a Monday. It's it's um. I, I know. <laughs> I'm all discombobulated, but always one. Oh, definitely, definitely. And um, firstly, yeah, thank you so much for jumping on today um, and taking the time out to do this. I know it's the first live for you on Instagram anyway. Um, you're, you're so often, you know, doing other things. Absolutely. Like I'm all good with the sound desk for radio, but uh, you had to teach me this morning, so I learned something new today. That's always great. <laughs> I think that was like the first time that I came into your studio and I'm like, oh my God, this huge microphone, I'm so scared of it. <laughs> they get me on a live and I'm like, oh yeah, no worries. I know, we all have our zones of genius. So thank you for teaching me that today. <laughs> oh, no, no dramas at all. Um, and firstly, I just wanted to say welcome to those of you that are jumping on. I'm just, um, I know there's a few of you that are coming on um, over from Facebook as well that um, I just sort of keen to, to jump in on this conversation. Um, and I just firstly wanted to uh, introduce Lou. So I met Lou, oh goodness, was it a year? Was it maybe six months ago? Yeah, it was probably, uh, yeah, I can tell. probably six months ago. So I started doing um, the show in, in March. So yeah, around then. Yeah. Wow, yeah. So Louise runs an incredible show. If you haven't already jumped on it, do so. It's just beautiful, raw, and like truthful and honest. It's uh, the lipstick lunch over on Newcastle Live, um, and just interviews some incredible people and just shares some beautiful stories about empowerment. Um, and you know, I just felt, you know, the moment I met Lou, I was like, oh my goodness, what a bundle of energy! What a beautiful, beautiful woman, and doing just amazing things um, in Newcastle, in the community, and also for others. So yeah, I feel very grateful for our friendship. So thank you. Absolutely, same here, my friend. Yeah. No worries. When can, when can people catch you on the Lipstick Lunch as well? Yeah, so it's every day uh, from 12 to 2 uh, each day. And, uh, yeah, Newcastle Live Radio. So you download the Listen app for Newcastle Live Radio and you can tune in every lunchtime. So I'd love to spend my lunch with you all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so worth it. So worth it. So welcome to everybody who's jumping on. Thank you so much, guys. Um so I want to sort of dive straight in now. As I said, you just, your story, you shared this story. Mm, it, look, it wasn't too long ago, was it? We had a, a chat about it in the studio, uh, yeah. about how it all unfolded. And, um, you know, I, I believe that uh, 
the, the things we go through, the trauma, the pain, the suffering, the, the challenges, the hardships, uh, there's always somebody you can share or help on the other side. I, I truly feel that. Um, and how did it come about for you and what, you know, what have you gone through? Let's, I'd love to just dive in from the start and okay. share this beautiful story of yours. All right. Well, it was 2016, so it was five years ago now, and uh, I had gone into um, a business and, um, you know, I would consider myself a workaholic and, uh, you know, this one day I was there and I was um, in the in the office by myself and I was doing some work and I thought, oh, my left hand feels a bit funny. Um, maybe I'm just tired because I was dragging and dropping music into into a program and I'd been at it for a while. So I went and got a coffee and came back and then I thought, no, actually, my left, my left side is numb. Um, so I sort of thought, okay, I'm, I'm just going to ring my dad because I'm here by myself. I'm just going to ring my dad. And dad is a uh, gorgeous, gorgeous um, northern English man uh, who, you know, their, their background is they went through the Depression, they went through both wars, they went through, you know, so we're kind of a very much a sucked up. And for whatever reason on this day, he went, I'm going to call an ambulance. Um, yeah. Stay there, I'm coming to you. And um, anyway, by the time the ambulance got there, they sort of checked me out. Dad was there. Uh, and they couldn't get my blood pressure to stabilise. So they said, look, we're not sure what's going on. But obviously they were thinking she's numb, maybe she's having a stroke. So they they put me in the back of the ambulance and uh, took me up to the John Hunter and where I had a CT scan. And what they came back and said was that, what I was having was called a migraine. So one in 100 migraines actually present like a stroke. So it's not necessarily that you have the full-on headache, but you have the symptoms of the numbness and, and that sort of thing. But um, I love how they use this terminology. When they came back, when they were wheeling me back from, um, from having the scan, they were very chatty. The nurses were very chatty on the way up. And on the way back, they were still lovely, but something had shifted. There was there was a change in the air, and I could I could tell from their demeanour that there was something going on. So we like got from their energy, like you, or their dialogue, or yeah, yeah, not necessarily anything that they said, and they were still bright and happy, and yeah, you know. But I could just feel there was a shift in the air, mm, a yeah, look burn in their eyes. So yeah. I got back to um, the emergency bay that I was in, and the doctor came in and he said, "Look, what you're having is a migraine." The, the reason that your numbers are migraine, we're going to give you some um, some uh, drugs for that, and that will go away in two hours. Um, but what they call it, the terminology that they call it, is an incidental finding. So you say, incidentally, I ran into Mabel down at the shops. You know, incidentally, um, you know, I ate a uh, Macca's burger for lunch. Incidentally, we found an unruptured brain aneurysm in your brain. Uh, they call it, oh. yeah. They call it an incidental finding because um, they found it when they were scanning for something else, and yeah. it had nothing to do with the numbness. That was all the migraine. Um, so it was. So the, the numbness was completely different, wasn't it? It was completely unrelated. Absolutely unrelated, and um, yeah, it oh. was. I've got goosebumps again hearing this. I'm like, yeah. absolute. It was big. It was, um, we're talking millimetres, obviously, when we're talking about um, the circulatory system in the brain. So it was eight millimetres, which is considered quite large. Um, and if that had found and it ruptured, it would have killed me on the spot. So that began my journey. Um, I had mm -hmm. to first test, so MRIs. I had to have a cerebral angiogram. Uh, and they basically said, look, the this this needs to be dealt with. Um, it's quite urgent, and uh, we do ways that you can go. There's a thing called coiling, which is where they go in through you through your groin in the same way as they would for a for a heart procedure. They can actually go up into that way. But they said where it is the fact that it's in a regular shape. Um, we need to actually do open brain surgery. So yeah, that began the journey. At this point, like, you're obviously coherent. You're hearing all of this, right? 
what what the hell is going on in your head? Oh. Other than the brain aneurysm at that time, what is going on? Like, what are your, what are you thinking? Okay. Like, well, um, I, can't, I can't even, I can't even comprehend. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it was, it was quite big and the, and what was unfolding in front of me, but it was amazing to look back on. Um, everybody else was falling apart, like going, oh my God, you know, I just went into this completely focused um, state. Yeah. Where I patient on, I nodded, I processed it. Um, but the only option for me was to get through it and to get to the other side. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that sort of um, really tested. There's nothing like someone telling you that you have something in your head that could kill you at any moment. Um, there is nothing like that to really hone in on. And so... I was lucky enough to actually, um, through a friend of mine who I had not seen in two years, turned up on my doorstep just after I'd had the cerebral angiogram. And um, this is Kate. And Kate uh, and I have worked together at the Newcastle Jets. Um, yeah. We're still really close. I love Kate. But she always turns up at a point in my life where I am, and she always has the answer. And I don't know how that happens. Um, <laughs> She's like a little guardian angel. She had been living in Sydney and uh, she married a beautiful man, Gab, and um, she decided she was going to council visit her parents and she just decided to stop him. And uh, I told her the story. I said, I don't want you to find this out through social media. This is what's happening. And she said, look, um, you know that uh, I got a bit bored and I went back to work a couple of days a week in Sydney. Uh, and I said, yeah, yeah, but I don't know what you do. And she said, because she's in marketing and PR events, and she I am actually the social media manager for the um, intensive care unit of Royal North Shore Hospital. I'm going to speak to my boss. So... The fact that she's just come, like, so randomly is just such an, like, it just really is, you know, the universe just working so in flow with what's going on and your trust and you're like, okay, I just need to get through this. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So he spoke to a boss who pulled out his phone and spoke to one of the aneurysm specialists in the country and through the public system I was in two weeks later. I believe uh, that the people who love us don't leave us, and I hope I'm not sure here. Um, the way that this unfolded, the way that it was something completely off, um, out of the ordinary that had nothing to do with the fact that I had an aneurysm in my head as that it was discovered, the way that this, um, this top specialist fell into my lap under those circumstances, I believe... That was my mother. And I believe she went, kid, you got something you need to know about and I'm going to force this, help you force a situation where you um, Yeah. And, and I felt her with me through that whole. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was um, as, I, as I like to say, it was definitely the worst of times. I mean, they, they spelled it out to me. They said, you, you know, the brain is um, not as hardy as the heart muscle. We can predict how the heart muscle is going to, um, going to react to surgery. Mm -hmm. you yeah. it, and you may still have major deficits, major mental deficits and major physical deficits from this operation, even if we do it flawlessly. They had to talk to my children who Bella and, and Liv were – uh, 13 and 16 at the time and say yeah. mum might not be the mum that you know now when she comes yeah. Um Yeah, and this was, this was in this time frame of the two weeks, wasn't it, yeah. between this waiting game of knowing that this is here. Like that just would have been an incredible time for you to, to navigate that, especially with, with your kids like and family and all of that. Yeah, and our lease was up. So I was packing my house up. I was <laughs> Nothing like timing, you know. 
my dad always says to me, Louise, you definitely are the epitome of life wasn't meant to be easy, but I love how you <laughs> get away. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I went in for the operation and it was major. So I was in ICU after, after the operation, lying down on that bed. Uh, they couldn't guarantee me I'd get off that bed. They couldn't guarantee me that I would be the same person. So in that moment, I, it was really about facing my reality and, yeah. uh, you know, and what, what I did recognise was that I didn't think about the hours that I worked. I didn't think about things that I had. I thought about the people. Yeah, yeah. And I, about the and I thought to myself, if I get off this bed, there is going to be a real shift in my priorities because... Uh, there is nothing like possibly getting to the end of your life and looking back and going, I haven't travelled to Santorini and I've worked too much. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, all of these experiences that I, you know, um, want, want to do. And so I came through the operation. I woke up in ICU. Uh, the first person that I saw was my beautiful dad. Uh, who was there, and uh, my godson was there. And so yeah. I tried to talk yet. I hadn't tried to, um, I hadn't tried to communicate yet. Um, but I, I started sort of coming to and I felt really sick and my godson was there and he was by the side of my bed and um, all I could get out was... So he got the spear bag and, you know, we, we did all that and... and you know, he's, um, <laughs> he's very flamboyant, he goes, ew, you know. <laughs> oh, my God, and, that's hilarious. And I, and I said, you spewed on me when you were a baby, you said this is payback. Then I knew I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, what, what, a, what a moment, though, I think, to, yeah, exactly, to not know. Oh, wow. To, to go in there and to also have that information like, oh, you may not make it out of here, but also you may come out of it a completely different person. Like, wow, like just super challenging and heavy and real. But, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, look, I call it so there I was I was extremely lucky. I had no physical deficit. I had no mental health. Um, I recovered uh at home with uh my dad looked after me um and uh that was a really special time um coming home yeah. i went back home and um yeah. and, you know, uh, had my had my um crumpets that he likes to make for breakfast that i had growing up and all that. he would have loved that your dad sounds like a like true legend he sounds well, great anyone who knows my dad um will will attend that he's an amazing man and i am yeah blessed um incredibly blessed so um you know i got better i moved into a new house uh i went back in, but my whole philosophy on life had changed yeah um you know so for that reason i call it the best of times and the worst of times because it was it was the worst. It doesn't get a lot more real than that yeah but, but I got out of it. Some people don't get those lessons until they're in their eighties, and they, you know, and they don't. Um, and that that was a, as hard as that was, and as terrifying as it was. Um, I don't five years down the track, um, you know, and and thank God I, I came through it. I was very very lucky, and I and I know that, but. Um, the lessons that it gave me were yeah. irreplaceable, and and I don't think that I would take that back. I don't think I don't think that I would do anything any different. I don't think that I would shy away from that experience because no, it, oh. I, I so understand that. And you put a post up uh, yesterday with one of my favourite quotes from Rumi: "The wound is the place the light enters you." It is, and we have a. Hundred yeah, we have a choice. Um, you know, there are experiences in life that will rock us, whether it's a health condition or a bad relationship or it's 
um, you know, a, a falling out with a friend or it's, it's um, financial, uh, you know, or even lockdown. Um, these are all, you know, major challenges that people face, but we have a choice. And, yeah. we, you know, we can let that define us. We can let it, we can use it as a crutch um, to put off doing the personal work. Yeah. We, um, you know, we can blame our behaviours on that event for years to yeah. come. Um, you know, or we can own our shit and go, this was horrible. Um, yeah. It taught me a lesson and I'm going to take that lesson, I'm going to apply it. And that's... Yeah. Because, you know, we all, and we all know people that, you know, have had a traumatic event and, and they hang on to that, yeah. um, you know, and, but not necessarily the lesson out of it and grow. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, and I have to watch that because I, I'm like, you know, you don't understand when you process this trauma how amazing it is on the other side and the lessons that you've learned. You've just got to, you've just got to process it. Um, yes. So, you know, with my I can be a little bit uh, impatient. Um, you know, come on, you can do it. I know you can do it. Um, but you know, it is it is a massive um, a massive gift that I was given to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, oh, I, mean, it, I so I so uh, I so agree that I was one of those people who sat in you know my own trauma for nearly twenty seven years. And I played the victim to it. I thought everything was kind of happening around me and to me um, until I actually owned, you know, my own eating disorder and that that was my own choices, that I had chosen that, I'd chosen that path. No one had done it for me and it wasn't because of anything. It was my choices along the way and I think it is until we have these things happen to us and we can fully sit in it and look at it and go, wow, what an incredible teacher that has been for me to, to grow from it. And, you know, I think this is where gratitude on a huge scale comes from. Um, I know that you are so big on gratitude and um, things like this remind us um, of living, I think, of having today. Now, I recently, actually, I'm reminded just in this story, and I'll briefly share it, and it's also always with his permission. But when I was speaking to Lydia quite a few months ago now, and I speak about it in my book, um, I was doing a talk on uh, responding versus reacting. And they're two totally different things. Response is in the moment we are present, we can respond with compassion and kindness. It's a choice. But reactivity, we're an autopilot, and we're just going on the same um, you know, synaptic connections in the same fire and wiring that we always do. It's reactive, it's unkind, it's judgmental, resentful. And I finished this talk and this gentleman came up to me at Alicia and he said, I just want to give you a hug. You know, the, just speaking on response versus reactivity is so important. He goes, I'm Danny Abdullah. I lost three kids and one of my nieces in a car accident in Sydney in February of 2020. Oh, and yeah. he said... Yeah, oh, and I, I get teary talking about it. He's an amazing man. And he said it happened in front of me and he said that I could have judged myself in that moment that I'd let my kids cross the road for ice cream. They got hit by a drunk and a drugged driver in Sydney. And he said, you know what? He goes, in that moment, I just it all just slowed down and I had a choice. I had a choice to either react with judgment and resentment and hate um, and show that to my family or I ch could choose to respond with love and show my family that that is what it's going to be moving forward. And that choice, like, to actually go, you know, I have that choice. This, whatever unfolds in front of us is going to happen anyway, but we always have that choice to to grow from it or to hold on to it, and that's as what you said before, it's, it's a choice as to how long we hold on to it for or hold resentment or judgment. Absolutely. And here's a really cool thing about the body. Yeah. Is that yeah. Is every cell in our body replaces. Yeah. Yeah. So we're holding on to, and I know that cells have memories and, and they um, they store trauma and they store, um, store our story. But how cool is it that every seven years, so in two 
there will not be a cell in my body that this event to. Yeah, that's incredible. That's a really cool perspective, Lou. I love that. And yeah. so, you know, we, it's, but it's our responsibility. Like these, these traumas happen and it's, and it's our responsibility to take them, um, make sure that we're not, right? That's our responsibility. No one else can do that for us. We don't have no. control have control over how we process that, how we move forward in the world and and what we learn. So we need to, you know, and obviously I've done a lot of um, a lot of reading and a lot of research and this show has been amazing. The people that I've met, yourself, um, you know, the, the clinicians that um, that I interview every week, um, yeah. every day they are getting me to challenge um, the way that I think thought and it's amazing. Okay. Yeah, um, but, um, you know, we have a responsibility to keep those memories, of course. They happen to us. Oh, totally. That we are not still in that reactive fight or flight and letting <sighs> trigger us and sabotage us going forward. Mm -hmm. and it's so, so important, yeah. And the only person that can do that is you. No one's going to pull Absolutely. you out. You know, no. if you're, if you're in a place where um, no one loves you and you're still stuck in that trauma years later, no one yep. can pull you out. It and, has to. Yeah, 100%. And what we practice gets stronger. So if we continue to practice the same thoughts, the same behaviors, the same actions, the same dialogue, we're just Groundhog Day and we just strengthen those synaptic connections, don't we? And, and, our, uh, Dr. Dr. Joe Dispenza says that by the age of 30, our body knows how to do it better than our brain because we have just practiced it for so long. And it is it is entirely up to us. It's one thing I always say constantly. I remind myself, I'm like, you are entirely up to you. We have to pull the reins. We have to take responsibility. Um, and, you know, until we do that, um, that's that's exactly it. That's when we uh, like open the valve, so to speak, and we can we can grow. It's it's fucking uncomfortable. Growth is uncomfortable. Yeah. Super like just discomfort is. I don't know. I I love discomfort now. Like even with what's going on right now, it is super uncomfortable. But I'm choosing to lean in and get curious about it, not critical. I'm like, wow. I wonder what's around the corner. Yes, this is really difficult right now, but. This is forcing me to step into this discomfort. And, you know, same with what Lou said with, with trauma, when we can face it, acknowledge it, it's not about pushing it down or suppressing it. It's just acknowledge it. Wow, I feel this. I have been through this. Um, I think there is so much growth that can come from that and gratitude. And, um, yeah, like, as you know, Lou, like gratitude's seriously the highest vibration we can have. And I just can't think, you must wake up every day in so much gratitude. Absolutely. And, you know, and it has been tough over these past few weeks. I mean, just on Monday, I had to do a video uh, for my business. I'm a, um, a, a, my other hat um, outside of the radio. And, you know, I had to yeah. do a video. Uncomfortable. I had to say some things in terms of us coming back to work that were, that were uncomfortable. I was shitting myself. I was... <laughs> Like, I was like, I'm going to put this out. People are going to come at me like, you know, it's, yeah. this is what's going to happen. And I had to go, right, as I say in my show, woman up, Louise, remember who you are, yeah. you know, and I had to lean into it. And it was tough. And I, I, I put my hand up. I'm still learning. Yeah. Still learning. And I put it off for four days. And then yeah. I just, Monday. I made myself accountable. I told my staff I was going to do it. I messaged a couple of people and said, I am doing this today to keep myself accountable, and I did it. Accountable. Yeah, and I'm not rocking in a corner. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's um, you know, that, that, that's, the sort of, that's the sort of stuff that we have to, we have to do. Um, Absolutely. Go, this sucks, and cry in the corner, or we can take it and go, I can well, what's, what's the lesson from this? The lesson that I learned from Monday's experience was why did you leave it four days? You know, yeah. like it yeah. wasn't 
that is what you thought, um, actually do, doing it. And, um, you know, th so I'm still learning, testing myself, trying to be better. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah. but, um, you know, I had gratitude. Gratitude for the fact that I had the Gratitude for the fact that I got out of my fight or flight. Yeah. And, uh, my and did it. And, yeah. you know, there's, there's stuff that you um, have to look down the barrel of possibly, you know, in, in that moment when I'm in the hospital, you know, this moment may never have been an issue because I might not have been here. Yeah. Oh, so, 100%. Know, everything that happens, every connection that I make, every um, everything good at it um, is a gift because I might not have had that. Yeah, ah, oh, hundred percent. It it really is, and it's um just such a, a really beautiful thing to hear. You know, I think you said right at the start of this conversation, I was a workaholic. Um, yeah, yeah and look, has, has that changed the way you approach that now? A lot. Look, yeah. I'm, I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, yes. You know, both the um, radio station. I am so very to the place that I am absolutely. There's a saying that if you if you do what you love, uh, you'll never work one day. Oh, that's exactly the saying, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But what I realised was was that um, we can get very uh, caught up in the doing, right? Oh, so, so much. You know, we can we can generate work for ourselves twenty four seven if we really want to. Um, you know, and guess what? No one gives you a back or a medal uh, for working yourself stupid. So yeah, yeah where did it get you? Yeah. Um, so I changed the way that I do things. I systemized a lot of things in my business. There are. Thank you, technology. Amazing programs that do things for you, like enrol people without you having to do anything. How amazing. You don't have to spend mm -hmm. enrolling a new client. There are actually, there's actually software that can do that for you. Uh, I learned to delegate. I learned to trust the genius of the people that I had around me. Yeah, that word delegate, like ask for help. Um, yeah, it's, uh, we just, we lose our spark. We we lose our energy. We plug our phones in overnight, but we're not replenishing our own cup. And you, you know, we've all been there. I get you, you guys that are on this chat. You know, give us a thumbs up if you've done that too. Like it's the world we're in. You know, I worked in media myself for nearly I don't know eight years, and it was highlighted if you went in early and if you stayed back um to you know to get the stuff done uh and you're like oh that's what i need to do and we just think yeah there's a such a a culture of it and you're right it's keeping us in fight or flight and if we're staying in fight or flight it's we start the cause of inflammation in our bodies which um eventually will make us sick stomach issues number one huge we we, we talk on this all the time like no. bloated, one of the first signs you're going to get that something's going on, you bloated or you can't poo. Like it's just you, our bodies are our biggest teachers and they are craving like our attention. It's the quote, quote from Lao Tzu, you know, everything in nature is accomplished yet nothing is hurried. We are the same. You can't, you can't force us to do stuff. It's, it's this we have to fill our own cup and when we do, we then have so much energy and vitality for ourselves that you can then give to others. Um, you know, it's, uh, look, uh, it's just, yeah, I, I just noticed when you've said that before and I'm like, it's, I think it's a really common thing and as, you know, the whole circumstances of this unfolding for you, you know, um, this overdoing, not being present, um, as I said, it was a such a... Uh, incredible awareness that you had that something was going on in the first place, I think, to pick up on that. But sometimes we're just in the state of busy and so we can't even listen to our bodies enough to pick up on it. No, and, you know, and, it, and you know, that was that was probably the biggest, you know, dong over the head, uh, you know, <laughs> going on because, you know, and, and I got it in a big way. But people every day, um, you know, skin conditions, uh, yep. gut, you know, your body's telling you. 
your body's telling you that you are not in the right, you know, um, yeah. and there's, there's stuff going on that you need to process and most of it's up here. Yeah, even hundred percent. It's up here. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's scary and it's confronting and no one's saying it's not. But, um, yeah, you've got to do the work on yourself. Work on yourself. The rest yeah. will be in place. Oh, a hundred percent. And I, I'm, I'm the same. We're always doing the work. I'm constant, especially the last two weeks, as we spoke about the other day, I was really noticing myself. I was doing this and this is a closed body. This is a body in fight or flight. When we are up here like this and we are closed off, right? We're yep. blocking off our heart space. It's because we are holding tension because something in the environment has triggered us and we're like, Oh, I feel uncomfortable. And we hold on to it. And then that becomes us. And then, of course, our digestive system shuts down temporarily because we're in our sympathetic nervous system. That is not what we want. We want no. things to move, like, you know, um, <laughs> without going into that. But it's the content, you know, there, uh, there's a, um, uh, there was research somewhere that was, it was 150 times a day, nearly the average Westerner is in fight or flight. Like, that's, Insane. Yeah, it's not cool. It's it's not where we should be. And um, again, I mean, that's that's a whole other conversation. But just be aware. Your body will tell you. Is what Lou said. You know, you're gonna notice in your belly. You're gonna see it in your shoulders. You're gonna your breath's gonna be short. Um, and then the practice of that will just bring more of that along. So catch it, breathe out, soften. Um, and especially at the moment, an open heart brings compassion. When we are just able to feel compassion and kindness in our bodies, no matter what's going on, the stuff's going on, you know, whatever it is at the moment, it's uncomfortable, but can we still soften in it? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I completely believe that. Um, so, you know, there's there's a lot that I've learned on great experience as much as people go, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened to you and, um, mm -hmm. you know, what I've learned from it is is amazing, and it helps other people um, without having to go through brain surgery. <laughs> that there are, you know, there are lessons um, that, oh. that we can take, and there are choices that we can make um, to yeah. ourselves. That is the most important work that we do is on ourselves and on our connections and our relationships. Um, yeah. Yeah, no one, as we said, no one is going to give you a medal for working uh, 60 hours a week. No, 100%. There's a, there's a quote from Mark Twain um, uh, that goes, and it's, it's a really good one, it's um, 20 years from now you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do rather than the things you did. He says, throw off the bow lines, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. None of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. And as what Lou said, in 10 years' time, if we keep working, keep overdoing, keep striving, keep the busyness, do we look back in 10 years and go, what the fuck was that all about? What, what did I miss out on? You know, we have now. You know, we are either nowhere or now here. And it is so, so I was speaking to a good friend of mine, Moni Maj, so I'm actually getting her on, on Friday for a chat about presence and um, on how we can you know, find, you know, gratitude and space in these times. And she was like, just come back to today and be so grateful that we have today, we're in a body, we get to experience today, however shitty, however messy, however challenging, however triggering, yep. but we get to experience it. We're here. And you know that more than anyone. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And that is gift. Oh, so, <laughs> such a gift. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you, lastly, before we sort of, I guess we end this, what, do you have a, a morning practice you'd like to share or what is it that you do every day to just reconnect back with yourself to do the work? Um, yeah. You know, something I, you'd like to share, yeah. You got me, you got me thinking about being more deliberate with this. Um, <laughs> oh, thanks, Bonnie. Um, <laughs> you are both such a gift, she says. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> Bonnie's our amazing producer at uh, Newcastle Live Radio. Um, he, is, he is an absolute, she's uh, one years old. I have I have never met anyone like Bonnie. Um, love you. Much gratitude. Oh, love, Thanks love for you. jumping on, Bonnie. Okay. Um, so 
yeah, I, I've got more deliberate about this. I get up, I have a journal on my five minute yeah. journal, what it takes. I write down three things I'm grateful for. I write down three things that I would like to achieve today. And I don't make that necessarily about the doing. I make that about the growth. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's a feeling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I go back, it only takes two minutes to do this thing. Yeah. At the end mm -hmm. of the day, for today and you know um i get up i you know feed my body i am deliberate with that i'm deliberate with um you know making sure my vitamins are right and and that sort of thing um and that sets me up for the day and then mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, i get to um, talk to a group of my women every lunchtime from 12 to 2 and yes yeah, yeah. And um, and the lessons that I take from that, and then that I get to connect with um, with children. Um, every so good. And you know what? They're fantastic teachers. Um, oh, aren't they? <laughs> they are fantastic teachers. And um, yeah, some of the some of the the most precious times that I've had in the last few months is literally um, sitting and rolling play doh, and yeah. you know uh, how amazing. And, um, you know, they, they are, um, uh, they, they show us the way they show us that, oh. you know, the, the wonder in the little thing, four leaf clover in, um, you know, in just, just hanging out and just being like, you know, it's, um, yeah. So, yeah. Mm. And I, I, to being able to recognize those things that, um, that you're grateful for, sometimes we don't actually realize how lucky we are. And no. yeah, so catching yourself and being able to go, I'm really grateful for this because I may not have had this experience, good or bad. I yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, you use your triggers as your teachers. There's huge lessons in that, and yeah. it is like, wow, well, thank you for that shitty day today. I I took this away from it. Great. Yeah. Uh, at least we got to have today. Yeah, and the yeah the people. You know, I can see. Um, yeah, Timberline is watching at the moment. Um. You know, oh. the best oh. of my work each and every week. My God, um, you know. So, <laughs> um, you, you guys do the show together too, don't you? Yes. Yeah. 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 So Timberland is Timberland is a, a relationships and sex drag therapist on uh, Lindsay. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super talented too. I remember seeing uh, seeing Timberlina at Central. Must have been like a couple of years ago. Amazing. Yeah. So um, looking forward to being able to do that again. So, yeah. And, yeah, she does drag bingo as um, virtually. Uh, if anyone's looking for a good uh, Friday or Saturday night, get on to her page and um, have a look yeah, at it. Perfect. Oh, I can definitely share that below into the comments as well and, and whatnot. So that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, it's 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 really about just catching those moments and being grateful for them. And, mm. you know, doing the work yourself. And, and if you can't do the work yourself, there are amazing people out there that can help you. There are, um, mm. there are yoga teachers. There are people who practice EMDR, which is an amazing um, tool to cope with trauma. Um, there are talk therapists. Um, there, you know, there are people that can help you um, yeah. to um, a traumatic and and can help you move past it and you know those people you just have to pick up the gift yep you know what Lou really interesting thing you said there when we um I believe when we open to it when we go you know what I'm ready to heal this I'm ready to um I think it was I'm very clear to remember with my angels or I remember saying the words I am done I can't do this any longer I need help and it was very clear. It was very distinct. And it was after that that the help came through. Yes. And I think when we open to that um, and we are in that state where we're like, I am I am completely done, I'm asking for help. Ask the universe, God, source, divine, unicorns, whatever you pray to, ask for help. And when you feel ready, the right person will come to you. It, that's how the universe works. It would, as what Lou was saying before, of the, the coincidence, and they're not coincidences, it's energy and it's, it's 
it, it is literally we are wanting to be looked after all the time. And when we are ready to to go, you know what, I'm ready to move past this because we, every single one of us on this world is here to be our highest and best and most beautiful self. And that comes from authenticity. It comes from literally just stepping into our light and going, you know what, I am so worthy to live a life that I deserve. And when we have that, we are then fully supported by the universe no matter what. The universe wants everything to work in harmony, everything. It does. Uh, yeah. The universe will just keep throwing obstacles in your way until you work it out. Exactly. The universe is always giving. It's never taking away. So if we are constantly in a state of lack, which I did for nearly 30 years, and not thinking I was enough and what more of that came back to me because <laughs> that was what I was practicing. So when I started to have gratitude and acceptance for what I had without the need for more, then the universe like, all right, girl, are you ready to receive some good shit here? <laughs> let's, let's, let's lift your vibration. Yeah. And, and then, you know, you, things happen and you're like, wow, this stuff's really cool. And it, it is just the way it works. Yeah. Hundred percent, it is hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lou, I am. Um, I'm so grateful. It was um, wow. We've been 40, 45 minutes. Um, I could I could talk to you all day. I just I love your energy. I just I so wanted to share this because I know personally I've had quite a few friends that have um, known family members or people that have gone through it. The stats are one in fifty. Is that correct? That this can happen to. It is, and um, wow. Well, yeah. Important to bring awareness to it um, because you know, it, in my case, um, I wouldn't have known about it until it ruptured. So, just no. knowing people mark a signs, you know, the, the headaches um, sometimes you might get numb, um, sometimes you might get dizzy, uh, you know, pressure behind the eyes, that sort of thing. They're yeah. all little, you know, um, little clues that yeah, which you, you wouldn't even think about that. No, no, no. Never. I won't oh. like and um so you know these are all things that um you know and li as as we talked about before you have to listen to and um yeah that was I, I had mine happen all at once in in the in the space of one morning uh but you know we can take that time to check in with our bodies each and every day and um mm. make sure you know oh absolutely it, it really is that important I think um, both Lou and I are just so big on, on the space that we create for ourselves in the morning, really just waking up and going, firstly, thank you. Like, actually wake up and say thank you. doesn't matter if you're like, I don't know who I'm saying this to. That's fine. Just thank, just say thank you. It feels good in your body. And we all have five minutes to write down three things we're grateful for. Like even you guys that are on here, like, you know, even just putting out a comment of what you're grateful for today is actually going, you know what, I am really thankful for that. Get a journal, whatever it is, doesn't matter how you do it, and just write it down and feel into it. It's a feeling. It's not about, oh, my God, I'm going to achieve that today is what Lou said. Get behind yourself and back yourself. And when you when you feel into that, it's it's like a buzzy feeling. It's like, wow, this really does feel good. And when we feel good, we attract more feel good because it's a vibration. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my friend. Well, let's leave it at that. I think we could as so we could go everywhere from here, but I just I just want to say thank you so much. You're I get goosebumps hearing you speak about this stuff because I it I just see so much growth from you all the time in this and you inspire me to grow um and i hope that i know i know that your words also um will have landed um to the hearts of many others here so thank you thank you so much for having me meg um you know i was a little bit at the tables too for us. <laughs> it's, been, it's been absolute pleasure and um thank you so much and i'm so grateful for what you have um, my life a few months ago and the difference every day so thank you uh, back at you um you beautiful beautiful dear friend and i love you to bits and um yeah i appreciate it and thank you so much for jumping on everyone uh today too i'll pop the details for lou's show the lipstick lunch down in the link in the comments um it is just so worth it she really does like go there has some beautiful beautiful people jumping on like timberlina and Sindra banks also jumps on every now and then as well which i know really well but get on there just people just sharing life 
you know, as it is, without the fluffiness, without the, you know, perfection, it's just, it's messy sometimes. And the more we talk about the messy things and the things that are uncomfortable, the easier it becomes to move through them. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, thank you, my friend. Have a beautiful day. Thanks, everyone. See ya. Bye. Amazing stuff. Thank you so much, everyone, for jumping on. I'm so, so grateful. Isn't she the most delightful woman you have ever met? Um, I hope that has just inspired you today to have a little bit more gratitude, to really look at the things that we do have rather than the things we do not. In the world we are right now, we all know it's super challenging and it can be really easy to focus on what we've lost or what we might not have in uh, three months or six months or whatever. But if we can come back to now and just really focus on what is here right now, we can actually see that we're okay. And that's when, when we understand we're okay, that's when we can soften our nervous system back down out of that fight or flight and actually get through today and feel well, look after our health and actually have a really nice clear mind. Thank you so much, everyone. It was an absolute pleasure. Make sure you go and jump on her show so you can download the Newcastle Live app. Um, straight away and you'll see the link there to the lipstick lunch which Louise is on every day is just amazing I'm with her on Mondays at about 1 40 for mindful Mondays with Meg but I love that girl so much and I'm so grateful and thank you to all of you as well have the most amazing day